welcome back. Now let's see how to work with Azure storage accounts from Terraform. So the first thing is I want to show you how you would actually create an Azure storage account in the Azure portal. So you can go on to storage accounts onto the service. Here we can hit on create. I'll just hide this. So when creating a storage account, like any other resource on the Azure platform, you have to choose your subscription and you have to choose the resource group. I'm going to choose an existing resource group. Next, we have to give a unique storage account name. So if I give this as the storage account name, it's saying this name has already been taken. So I need to try and to give a unique storage account name. Next, I need to give what would be the location of the storage account. So I'll just choose a location. Next is the performance. So there are different performance levels when it comes on to storage account. I'll leave it as standard. This will create something known as a general purpose V2 storage account. In terms of the redundancy, I'll choose a lower cost option. I'll choose locally redundant storage. Then I can go on to next. So there are a lot of features that are available when it comes on to a storage account for networking, data protection. So I'm leaving everything as it is. I'm not making any other changes. I'll just go on to review and create. And let me go ahead and create the storage account. So I've seen some of the important things that we need to configure for the storage account is the resource group the location of the resource, the storage account, what is the name of the storage account, what is the performance of the storage account, and what is the redundancy, so locally redundant storage. So now we want to create a storage account by the use of Terraform. So here I can see I have the storage account in place. Yeah, then we can have access onto the different services. So you have containers for the blob service, file share for the file share service, queues for the queue service and table for the table service. Now we want to perform these same steps from Terraform. Now, if you want to look at what is the resource commands for storage accounts. So what we can do is we can actually go on to the storage account section here. So I'll search for storage. Here we have a lot of storage based resources. I'll click on Azure RM storage account. And here you can see an example usage when it comes on to creating a storage account. You can see that we have to give the name of the storage account. So these are all arguments, the resource group, the location, the account here, the account replication type. If you want, you can add tags as well, but normally I won't be making use of tags. And if you scroll down even further, so you can see the argument reference. So again, you can see a description for each argument and you can also see the other arguments that are also available. So in the example here, if you scroll on top, so this particular example, it's not giving all of the arguments that you can specify. So there are other arguments that you can also specify when creating the storage account because you've seen that when it comes on to the properties of the storage account, there's a lot that you can change. For example, if I just go on to the configuration of the storage account. Yeah, in terms of the setting of allow blob public access is currently enabled. I can disable this. So this will be a property of the storage account on the Azure platform. If you want to allow storage account key access, again, this is enabled. You can have this disable. Again, this is a property of the storage account. And that similar property will be available as an argument somewhere over here in this particular list. So if I scroll down here, we can see something known as allow blob public access. So this particular argument, when it comes on to the resource block in Terraform, it maps to this property of allow blob public access. Here, the default is false. So if you want to allow blob public access, then you should mark it as true. So again, for the properties of Azure resources, you will have an argument for sure that is available 
in the resource block when you want to define the resource in your Terraform configuration file. So let's do one thing. Let's copy this entire script. So I'm only going to copy this resource part. This is for actually creating the resource group. We already have the resource group in place. I'll just copy all of this. I'll replace our resource group section. I'll place it here. Now, this is the resource type. So as your RM underscore storage underscore account. Yeah, we need to give a name for the resource within Terraform itself. So we can give this has the name. Now here is the actual name of the storage account. And remember, this needs to be unique. It needs to be a unique name. So trying to give a unique name for the storage account. Next, what is the name of the resource group? So it's app GRP. What is the location? It's North Europe. And if you're wondering, so if you go back here, it's making a reference onto Azure RM underscore resource group dot example dot name. So actually it's referencing this particular resource in the Terraform configuration file. So subsequently, I'll actually explain how you can actually reference other resources in your Terraform configuration file. Yeah, I'm just trying to explain how do you deploy different types of resources. So I'm just making it a little bit simple in the beginning. And then later on, we'll see how to reference other resources in your Terraform configuration file. The account here is standard. Now, in the replication type, GRS basically stands for Geo Redundant Storage. Remember, when we create the storage account, we can actually also change it in the configuration. We have these different replication types, locally redundant storage, Geo redundant storage, etc. I want to choose locally redundant storage. So for that, it's actually LRS. This is the replication type. And if you want to know what are the options that are available, Again, go on to the documentation, scroll down. If I go on to the account replication type, here you can see the different values that you can pass in the account replication type. So I don't need the tags, so I'll just remove this entire part. And we have now the definition of the configuration file for deploying the storage account. I'll just save this. So now here, let me go ahead and create a plan. I'm just putting the up arrow on my keyboard so that I can go on to the previous command to create a plan. So now again, it's going to go on to our Azure account. It's going to check if a storage account is actually present with this particular name. Now over here in terms of the response, so it's one to add and one to destroy. So if I scroll on top, so here it's saying the storage account is going to be created, but at the same time, it's saying that the resource group is going to be destroyed. And this is because Terraform currently understands the state. It understands that earlier on, this configuration was used to create the resource group. And currently we don't have the resource specified in this configuration file. So what we can do is we can actually add multiple resources. So here, let me again add the resource for the resource group. So what I've done is I've added the resource again onto the configuration file. So you can have multiple resource blocks. So this will ensure that the configuration for the resource group will stay intact. Now I'll just go ahead and create the plan again. So now it's saying there is only one to be added and that would be our storage account. So please know that even though we have now the definition of the resource again for the resource group, it's not going to go ahead and recreate the resource group again. No, if the resource group already exists on the Azure platform, it will not do any changes. So here the plan clearly states that it is going to add one more resource and that is our storage account. So now I'm going to apply the plan. 
So now it's going ahead with the creation of the storage account. So after waiting for some time, we can see now this is complete. So if I go back on to Azure and let me go on to storage accounts, I can see my Terraform store in place. So first, you just want to go through the creation of a storage account when it comes on to Terraform.